Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany. Usually I taste rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Jameson, a triple cask. This is triple, triple, triple distilled, triple cask. This is a um, sherry, bourbon, and Malaga cask mix for a subtle sweetness and extra drop of smoothness. Travel exclusive product of Ireland. This is the one liter bottle. That's why it looks bigger. This is the normal size bottle. This is the Jameson Black barrel, which I will compare it to. You do notice a difference in the girth as well as the height here. And the very, very special thing is um, the, first of all, we have the screw cap, which is not bad, which is not great, but it shows the level of whiskey we're at. All right, 34 euros is what I paid for this. I've seen it for 32, actually. And over here, I'm going to actually compare it to the Black Barrel from Jameson. Now, Jameson has a few different variations or bottlings or um, expressions on the market. The normal Jameson is triple distilled. It's a classic green bottle. You can find it everywhere. I remember being at an open bar in um, England. I said, hey, do you have a whiskey? He said, well, I have some Johnny Walker. I said, anything else? He said, well, I got some Jameson. I said, why not? Um, would rather I prefer a Jameson over a Johnny Walker any day of the of the year and especially if they have something called the black barrel black barrel means they take the ex bourbon casks from the states which are just normally can only be used once sent over to Ireland or sent over to the um, UK Scotland and then they in this case they rejuvenate these casks by actually charring them again now this is a mixture of just normal ex bourbon casks um, sherry casks, could have been Odoloso, could have been Pedro Jimenez, could have been Fino, could have been any type of sherry, we don't know, and also a special type of cask which is not often used, Malaga. Malaga is a city, a region in Spain, and there's a special wine called Malaga wine. It's a 15 to 22 percent fortified white wine. There's a natural wine as well, which has to have at least 14% um, natural ABV, which is very hard to get. That's why it's fortified. Fortified means they stop the fermentation, um, the changing through the yeast of the sugar and the alcohol, and they add a neutral spirit to it, right? And so what are the berries that are used or what are the grapes that are used here for the Malaga? That would be the Pedro Jimenez, the PX, and or also the Moscatel, which are both grape um, types of grapes that I personally love in my um, sherry and so on. So this is a very sweet white wine and it has to be aged in oak. And so what we do is we take those old oak barrels that have been used here by the Malaga and use it now to give a special type of a, a note, of special type of taste profile here for our whiskey. It says here, good things come in threes. It's a belief that served us well in distillation, so we give it a try with maturation. <coughs> Our bourbon and sherry casks were introduced to Malaga casks, delivering a new taste experience. Triple distilled, now triple tack cask for a subtle sweetness and an extra drop of smoothness. If I were the managing um, marketing director, I would have had a different slogan than on the front, but hey, that's me. All right. That is different over here. Oh, I love my Black Barrel. I do. Uh, I like Jameson. I like Jameson. I love Black Barrel. All right. So what we have here is a blended whiskey. Blended whiskey means blending two things together. So you have single pot still whiskey. What we have here basically would be something like red breast. We have the 10, sorry, we have the 12, we have the 12 year cast strength, we have the 15, we have the 21, which I also have up there. Um, this is single pot still whiskey. It doesn't mean that it's only in one pot still. It's still distilled in three, still distilled in three pots still. We have the wash still, we have the intermediate still, and we have the spirit still. So it comes in, the mash will be put into this big copper pot, heated up from below with heat, and then the, the um, alcohol actually um, evaporates because it evaporates at a much lower level than the water below 100 degrees Celsius, 220 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it condenses, and then they do it a second time, and then it condenses, and they do it a third time, triple distilled. In Ireland, they usually only do it twice. So 
Single pot still actually means it's made from malted and unmalted barley. Um, just think of this. Barley is the king of the grains. If you want to make the best whiskey in the world, use barley. Single malt scotch whiskey is always 100% malted barley. Now, blended whiskey actually means they take the single pot still Irish whiskey and they mix it together with grain whiskey. Grain whiskey was actually created by this guy from Ireland and he actually, Mr. Coffee, and he created this continual continual pot still. It's continual still. Um, it's a column still where you don't have to clean the pots each time you use them. Now a pot still imagine is like a pot. You cook rice, you cook potatoes, and you have to clean it out and next time you use it again. Now this continual pot still, this coffee still, is actually just like we use also in the bourbon. Those beer stills, you put it in the end, they just keeps on going through. There's different plates, it works the way up, and you take out the bottom, and it just keeps on going for up to maybe a week or so before you have to clean it once, and you turn it back on, and you do it for another whole week. Pot stills, you use it maybe for six hours, you clean it for two, you use it again for six, and so on, and so on, and so on. So it's a lot more of a time-consuming, energy-consuming process. Single pot still Irish whiskey, you can only use barley and grain. You can use wheat, cheaper, corn, usually even cheaper, rye, which is not that cheap, and barley, which is probably, barley is most expensive of all the, all the grains out there that we normally use for whiskey. So this is probably some corn or some wheat added in there in that very, very high distilled process of grain whiskey, and we put them together and we make this um, we age it in the barrel. The barrel is the most important part. Um, up to 80%, somewhere between 60, 70, 80% of the entire taste of the whiskey will come from the barrel. And so if you're talking about ex-bourbon barrels, you're talking about vanilla. If you're talking about ex-sherry, you're talking about some red fruits, some raspberries, some plums, and so on. And if you're talking about Malaga, you're going to get some, some pears. And what I'm going to go for is a little bit of mango even. All right, That's what I get the entire time here. I get a little bit of like a pumpkin melon type of mango moment. I'm not those three things are not really identical, but it's going towards that direction. I've actually said, why don't we just take this whiskey, put it into a take a mango juice, put some sparkling water in there, and then put some um, Jameson triple triple on top. Mwah. That could be a very very nice. This, on the other hand, has a lot more of a dark note. Um, it's dark brown sugar. It's a little bit of molasses. There's a lot of wood in here. There's a there's just a fabulous, fabulous um, nose as well as mouth um, flavors in here that just it it, it 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 seems like it's older. This still is a little bit of a younger spirit, a little bit of a fruity spirit, a little bit of a lighter spirit. So cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, whiskey is not something I shoot. Whiskey is something I enjoy. Um, and I, therefore, I swish it around. I take a look at the flavor profile. I an analyze it, and I give you a nice little report here. So the first thing that kicks in is the fruitiness. Um, it's a little bit of a corn fruitiness, a little bit of a berry fruitiness, gooseberries, um, cranberries, the, 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 the light ones, not the red ones, the more the white ones. Um, and then it kicks over. There's a nice, smooth, silky moment on the tongue. It's a little oily as well. It's not watery. It has a great mouthfeel here. And then it switches over a little bit of that fruitiness. And as I said, like an overripe. Um, cantaloupe going towards a pumpkin. We have pumpkin soup, especially in the, the fall time, and moving up into a mango. Very nice, very light, very fresh, very spring, very, very, very um, summer type of life. I see people on the beach in the Caribbean. Um, it even has a little bit of a rum moment, which is not in there. There's no rum whatsoever, but it has a little bit of that feeling, even on the tongue, that sweetness is there. Well done, well done. Um, as I said, I'm going to give this an A, B, or C, um, or a D or an F. A is why haven't you bought it? This is fantastic. Um, if you find it, buy it. B, buy it. 
C, if you want to, you can buy it. D, you don't need to buy it. F, oh, why was this even produced? Now, this is for me a solid C, almost C plus. Um, this is a very nice whiskey. This over here is a, a B minus. This is very, very good, especially for that value for money. Um, value for money going once again back to this 34 euros, so less than $40 for one liter. Um, this is travel retail, so you can pick it up maybe at the airport. Maybe you can get, even get it for 32 um, euros or dollars if you have a travel retail where you don't have to pay any taxes on it. Um, very, very nice whiskey. Very well done. So I'm going to give this actually a C plus here for the value for money. Um, if you're looking for something to mix with, if you're looking for something to drink on the rocks, if you're looking for something to drink neat, as I'm doing right now, this is an okay whiskey to do this with. And it's a light, fruity moment, yeah? Hmm. So I bought both of these bottles myself. If I were to buy a bottle again, I would buy the Black Barrel. This is fantastic. This is right up my alley. This is just this... It's like a, even it's it's a bourbon um, from an Irish people from 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 Ire from Ireland. It's got that wood moment going there. It's got that sweet um, sagamore moment. It's got a little bit of like a sweet sweet wood moment in there. It's just fabulous. Hmm. Hmm. And even there, it's even oilier. It's got a better mouth feel. It coats your mouth even more. This would be a shame to mix with drinks, in my personal opinion. This is something you should enjoy neat. If you can, if you can enjoy it neat, put a little bit of water in it, bring it down a little bit to maybe 30% ABV and still enjoy it there. That's still a nice thing. If you really need to mix it, why not? But then I'd rather go to the normal Jameson or even to the triple. All right, Whiskey Jason here. This is my personal opinion. What is your personal opinion about Jameson? Is there any expressions or bottlings that you especially like? Is it the triple? Is it the crested? Is it the um, the black barrel? Is it the original? What is your favorite uh, Jameson expression out there? I'm going to go for the black barrel at the moment. This is really, really nice. This is something I thoroughly enjoy, and the price point is actually something I can highly recommend. Not bad, just a little bit different and different tangent over here, a little bit more of that fruitiness, a little bit more of that lightness. Also nice as something for a more of a spring or summer day. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell if you want to see anything that comes out especially my live streams, for example, I do every once in a while. And also thank you very much for watching this guy who normally reviews rare and exotic whiskeys. No one else had done a video about this at the time of filming, therefore I decided to do it as well. All the best. See you later. My videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays normally. Bye-bye.